guys, it's Obersign here, and as you can see, we are in fact doing a completely different video. This is on how to set up OBS for basically the best performance and best quality that you can get. And these are my settings, so it's going to be different for your machine, but you can have a rough guideline of what settings to set up. And it varies from computer to computer, but just to get you started, as you can see, this is my OBS my OBS window here, it's 64 bits and we're on Windows 10, it's the latest OBS as of now, so I don't know what it would be if you're watching a video in the future, I can't tell the future, I don't time travel, but as you can see I've got my sources here, I've got to set on Rocket League because that's just my desktop capture because of some problems that I've had, but you won't get them problems I'm sure of it because I've got a few drivers that conflict with each other, you've got scenes here, I don't have any other scenes set up, don't need to, but you can change the scene transitions and so on over here, but what we're going to do is have a look at Let's have a look at uh, Mixer first. So as you can see, I've got my face cam there, which has got a built-in microphone. It's a, it's a webcam built into my monitor. It's a Dell monitor with two microphones that are in stereo. Never use them because they make you sound like a robot. It's really weird. But I've got a normal mic, which is just here. And that's on set on track two. And desktop audio is set to track one. So that, that'll be Mixer just there. And you can just, every, as you can see, every time I talk, it's going up and down, just there. Desktop audio would be whether you're playing a game or something on the desktop. And then what we'll do, do is go into settings. So settings is just opened. And then we click on uh, output and we'll have a look at these tabs just up here. So you can see there's streaming. I don't use streaming. I don't stream. Well, I have streamed before, but it's been a while. It was before Christmas I streamed. So what we'll do is click on recording. And you can't really see the settings at the moment because I'm using the program to record and this is what you're seeing. But just to give you a basics, a basis of what I actually have set up, audio track 1 and 2. So like I say, track 1 will be your gameplay audio or the desktop audio and track 2 will be, would be your microphone. So you set that up by going to audio and then you'll have desktop audio device. So just select that as default or you can select it from whatever your outputs are. It'll be different to mine I'm sure. But you, you select your speakers, your headphones, your de desired format of like how you hear things. I've set it to default because I vary between my surround sound and my headphones quite a bit. Moments on surround sound, so yeah. And then you set your mic slash auxiliary audio device, and I've set up mic in rear panel, as you can see there. And you don't need to change anything else there. You maybe want to change that to your the same as what your audio is set on your sound panel so if you right click on your little sound icon in the bottom right hand corner click on playback devices you can click on your speakers as you can see there then you go to the end where it says advanced you click on 24 bit and you can see there like if you've got a 16 bit you, you've got some problems because yeah it would just sound horrible <laughs> have it set to 24 bit if it's set to that, that's fine. If your computer doesn't crash with that, that's fine. Like I say, I've got tri driver conflict problems, but as expected, people get them type of problems on computers. You can have it set to that one or that one. Any higher, then you're bound to bump into problems. But set it to that, you'll be stable as hell, basically. So have it set to that, and then you can click OK, and it applies it. Then you go back to that. So go on to Output, and then you click on Audio over here. You want to set your track 1, which is going to be your desktop audio or your gameplay audio. You don't particularly want that really high if you're doing like talkovers over your like just general talking over the game, the commentary. There we go, I've got there in the end. But you click on that and you change it to 192 bitrate because you don't want the highest end quality for the, the game audio because it's going to be so quiet because you're talking over the top of the game audio. It's like when you have music in the background, you have your music basically the same volume as your actual gameplay footage so yeah you, you have to try and balance it out but you want your mic audio to be top quality so you have that set to 320 bit rate there as you can see and then for track three and four but well, you've got four tracks there they're, they're set default but i've got nothing on them tracks so that doesn't really matter nothing gets recorded to them separate tracks but they're default at 160 which is still good quality it's just not top notch quality if your computer can handle 320 bit right there and 192 bit right there you you'll be fine if it doesn't if it struggles quite a bit on that then what you want to do is lower the settings for the audio just a little bit because that that can help let's go back to the recording tab so as you can see here audio track one and two like I've said is ticked so that's the audio side of things I think I'll show you that one yep we go back to output and recording so you can see I've 
put my recording path onto a completely separate drive from the C drive and a separate, uh, complete separate hard drive to my games as well because I've got a C drive, then the drive with the games on, then I've got a drive for just re recording so I don't lose any bandwidth whatsoever across all the devices. So what I've got the encoder set up to is the AMD video coding engine which means it utilizes my graphics card to actually record the gameplay. It goes through the graphics card and records all in this special like, little device that's on the graphics card. Most modern day hardware has certain video coding engines like Intel has, I think it's V-Sync, I, I don't know. They, uh, no, it's Quick Quick Sync or something like that. And then you've got uh, NVIDIA that has N-Sync. I, I don't even know what NVIDIA and Intel is because I'm, I'm not that that way I, I have an AMD complete AMD system AMD hardware so I use the AMD graphics card to actually record my videos with but if you've got an, an, uh, an NVIDIA graphics card you can use that encoder and it will pop up with NVIDIA and tell you that it's using NVIDIA if you've got a beastly uh, CPU you can use the if it's an Intel one you can use the Intel uh, CPU encoder it will tell you with an option like you can literally click it and it will show you um, you can use just the normal uh, codec which is by default it would be the same as the streaming one I think yeah it would be uh, times 264 which is just standard HD format you don't need to change anything here although I have this set to main you can change that to the rate control that's that's very important if you want to change it to variable bitrate you have to be careful with what you change with that because for example if a really graphical intense scene happens in a game for example loads of explosions and then you suddenly move to a scene when nothing's going on like not much color is on the screen like a menu screen for example in the game the bitrate will jump so high in that explosion game, in that explosion scene from for example like a two minute video of you just running around uh, let's say in battlefield you're running around shooting everyone that 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 bitrate per two minutes is going to go to like two gigabytes per two minutes and then you're in the menu and it'll drop down to like one megabyte like the quality is absolutely crazy so if you just keep it a constant bitrate so CBR constant bitrate I have mine set to 12,000 <laughs> simply because I'm using the AMD video coding engine now if you're just using the CPU to actually encode your videos while recording you want to have that set around about 8,000 to 10,000 bearing in mind if you record at 60 FPS if you ha if you have you have to actually have it higher to get decent quality at 60 fps otherwise you start getting some scenes that are a bit blurry uh, some color loss and things like that things can go wrong so then things that can go wrong like i say i i literally have it set up with the amd video coding engine and the reason i have it at 12000 well 60 fps on the cpu should be at around about uh, 16000 bit rate because that's the standard for when you're uploading to YouTube. Now I upload to YouTube, but the AMD video coding engine actually uses a slightly different method to basically encode. Instead of the CPU encoding, it uses a completely different method for example, the hardware. So the quality doesn't nece necessarily have to be so high. But I try and keep it in between uh, 10,000 uh, 10, because 10,000 is 30 FPS on YouTube, or it's 8,000, something like that. And then 16,000 is for 60 FPS. So I just put it in the middle, 12,000, and the quality, as you can see in this video, is in HD, uh, 1080p, 60fps. The quality is absolutely fine, well, as I can see it. The audio might not be so great because I'm having problems at the moment setting up the microphone to correctly pick up my voice. But that's at a later date. I'll sort that out. But at the moment, it's watchable. You can hear me. It's fine. There's music in the background. It's all fine. So we go back to video. Let's have a look at the video. Video output is currently active. Well, there you go, that's something new, <laughs> obviously, because we're recording. But I have base canvas resolution of uh, 1080p, uh, output scale resolution is just set to default 1080p. Uh, downscale filterer, that's something to take in mind. If you want to uh, downscale your videos, for example, you want to downscale them to, let's say, rescale output to 720p instead of uh, 1080p, then you'll have to use the downscale filter there's three options and it'll tell you basically which one's which you could have got 16 times and 32 times 32 times is the best obviously and that one's just the best performance I'm not doing any scaling so I don't need to select any of them options I've just got that set at uh, default fastest because it utilizes the CPU the CPU 
as you can imagine, will end up just being eaten up by this program if you're recording on the CPU. So that then varies that, that varies quite a bit. The common FPS values, I've got that set to 60 because I'm recording at 60 FPS in pretty much every video that I now do. This is my set setup basically. You can record at 60 FPS, play games at 60 FPS. It's quite handy. So we go back to the audio here. I know it's a bit chaotic this video, but thank you for watching throughout this video. As you can see, just everything set there. If you want to copy copy these settings into your OBS, then be sure to do so. If you get any problems, then drop a comment in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to get back to you and help you out. I'm sure other people will help you out as well in the comment section. Also the output, you see, I don't do any streaming, so the settings are literally just default. And then recording, like I say, I've got mine on a completely different drive. That's that's the number one key. If you want to get Bigger, in, uh, bigger performance boost in playing games and recording, have your recordings on a separate drive to your C drive and your game drive if you've got like three hard drives. Otherwise, then you want to have at least the, the game on the C drive and then have the recordings on a separate drive. You need at least two drives to be able to record with this program. If you want to record at, record, record at a high bitrate like this, then you need to have two separate drives and you need to make sure they can actually write that fast. I mean, mine are 64 bit cache and they're, I think they're Seagate hard drives, I, I keep forgetting now. But they're quite good hard drives, 8 terabyte hard drives now, I've upgraded them. So, yeah, just make sure the bit rate's like a reasonable number to what your hard drive can write at. Sorry, I've got a cold at the moment, so I'm struggling with talking and so on. <laughs> bit rate, that's the number one thing that people get confused with. I haven't gone into too much detail about it because there's so much information on the internet about it. If you struggle with OBS, there's a forum and the people on there are amazing. They really do help you out on the forum. I'm just giving you sort of a basis to work upon here. You don't need to change the keyframe interval if you're using the AMD video coding engine. This is just my preferences for using the AMD video coding engine. Don't get a single problem with it. But a bit rate. If you're recording on the CPU and you've got a fairly sort of mid-standard CPU so like the Intel Core i5 or an AMD 8 core CPU one of the like the 88120 range I think that's one of the ones but anyway if you got one of them sort of mid-range CPUs then you want to re be recording around about 8000 bitrate because the CPU will start to struggle when you're playing high FPS motion games for example Battlefield 4 Battlefield 4 and OBS on the CPU alone, it it literally will just rinse the CPU. You will get 100% load the whole time while recording, and it will be as laggy as hell. It will be horrible to watch. So if you're going to be recording on the CPU, just lower the bitrate down to about 8,000. It's your preference though, so just have a little fiddle around with that. You don't need to change any of the used custom buffer size or the advanced settings. I don't need to anyway. If you find any any more information about changing them settings then please let me know in the comment section down below also I've got it set up so it automatically generates the date and time you can change generate file name without space and so on but you can fill around with that that's your choice your preference just just to clarify to get into this mode if you're using OBS for the first time and setting up for the first time you might want to click from simple to advanced it gives you way more option here as you can see um, stream uh, that's yeah, I haven't got anything that set up. I've got mine set to dark. You can set it to default, which is just the white. It's probably what you're seeing right now, and just you click dark. I just like the dark theme. The dark theme's quite nice. It's nice and clean, nice and simple. You've got audio there, video, like I say, hotkeys. I've got my hotkeys set up to start recording with F9, stop recording with F10. I don't do streaming, so I don't have any of keys binded. And then we've got here, advanced, which some of you have probably been waiting to see. I've left everything at default. Reason? It, the quality's fine. Seriously, the quality's fine. There's probably so much information on the internet about this section. In fact, I know there is. On the OBS forums, there's so many options that you can choose here. And literally, they say, don't change any settings in the advanced options. You don't need to. Because they, they've been set up so perfectly with the hardware. OBS uses raw hardware performance. It is, it is one of the only programs that uses raw, utilizes the raw hardware performance. You've got Shadow Play, you've got, I uh, can't even remember the program from AMD, but they've got that AMD Rapture software, Capture software. They don't utilize it. They, they literally, they utilize a special, like, I don't know what it's called, like a, a special plugin in a sense from <laughs> the open source project. 
as you can see here, OBS is... Yeah, the, the advanced settings don't change anything there. Unless you really have to, you can change that to OpenGL. Don't really need to. Just leave it at default, Direct3D11. Set it to that, if it's not already set to that. Video adapter, I think you can change that if you've got like an Elgato or something like that. But I don't use any capture cards or anything because I, I record purely and simply on the PC. So this is just PC capture. If you want to look up Elgato and other capture cards and things like that, you're going to have to look on the forum or you can just literally search on Google. There's plenty of information around for that. And then you've got the color space here. You can up that, but I find you don't really need to because the quality is adequate enough to be able to record at 60 FPS at 1080p, as you can see there. And then apart from that, just yeah, just copy these settings, as you can see here. You can pause the video whenever you want on these settings, go back between them. So. Yeah. And if you've got any questions, then leave a comment in the comment section down below. You can check out my Twitter, that'll be in the description down below as well. You can tweet me, message me, you can email me. My email address is around on one of my social medias. It's quite easy to find. It's oversignproductions at gmail.com. If you've got any queries, questions about this program, you need any help setting it up, then please be sure just to contact me one way or another, and I'll give you a helping hand. And anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>